Hey friends, I'm so glad you're here today because we are gonna talk about the proven way to start your day the best way. Hello, ever woke up on the wrong side of the bed? Ever not known how to find the right side of the bed? I'm telling you what, I know what you're talking about. But what is this proven way? Let me take you back just a little bit. So David, Ashton, and I went on this mission trip to this country that we were hoping to get out of without getting arrested because we had trouble getting the religious visas, we were preaching the gospel, we were giving away free books. We were in Cuba, preaching the gospel in a communist nation. And as we're driving in this taxi down the street, there's this line all the way down the block in front of this little strip store. And I asked the taxi driver, what's going on? And he said, oh, we heard they have chicken today. What? You can't get chicken? No, chicken's something rare and unusual. Matter of fact, if we go to the restaurants and we order chicken, they'd be like, oh, we're out of that today. Well, I'll take the beef. Oh, we're out of that today. You couldn't get much there at all. You couldn't, the guy couldn't remember the last time he had ice cream. I have Halo Top in my freezer hidden from my husband. The only reason I can't get ice cream is because David eats it all. I don't even understand the problems that they have. If you're a brain surgeon, a construction worker, or a bus driver, the government only lets you make $20 a month. There are no Christian bookstores in the entire country, and they've only let them build 20 churches in the last 50 years because there's no construction materials, but they're building like three hotels right now in Havana alone. Ooh, it really gets me thinking. I think I take a lot for granted that I don't realize I'm taking for granted. I'm breathing without an oxygen tank. I'm walking without crutches, a wheelchair, prosthetics. I've got a family around me who loves me and encourages me, and yet somehow I get to feeling like, <gasps> I deserve more. God, how about these humility prayers? God, why haven't you put me where I'm supposed to be? I know there's more for me, Lord. Have you ever prayed that? <gasps> don't lie, we're almost in church, not really. But don't lie. We wanna know, God, why haven't you put me up there yet? And God's in heaven going, hey, why haven't you lined up with what I have for you to do yet? Oh, okay. So how do we line up with that? Actually, it's the same thing it's the best way to start your day. It's proven it makes it better. Wanna know what it is? I'm getting ready to tell you in three, two, go to NicoleCrank.com and start telling me what you're thinking. Get on your Facebook, Instagram, and hit your DVR. One, let's go. So here we are driving down the streets of lovely rural Cuba and we are on our way to a church, actually to a conference to speak to a bunch of pastors and give out books. And to be honest, this missionary trip that we've been on in this third world communist nation has been a little bit interesting because I haven't been able to get Wi-Fi at all. I haven't been able to get phone service like at all. I haven't been able to update my Instagram, put up an Instagram story. I haven't been able to check my emails, do the stuff I need to run my church. Ah! do my job freaking out just a little bit there's only one charger in our room for my phone my husband's phone my daughter's phone our cameras our iPads our laptops how do you rotate all that the stress <sighs> and if I can complain I just want to complain about the air conditioning in our hotel it only goes down to 75 degrees and I'm like how are we gonna sleep in 75 degrees these are real issues and then as we are driving down the streets in Cuba it's about a three hour trip to this church we're going to. And you wouldn't believe how many horse drawn carriages we have passed on the highway. People, buses stopped in the middle of the highway and people loading on and off just in the middle of the highway with cars zooming by. I got to thinking, all right, Megan Trainer's got a song called Champagne Problems. And yeah, I think I've been complaining about champagne problems. I think it's easy for us to get distracted by what's up in our face because the further away you get, the smaller I get. And the further away a problem gets, the smaller it gets. But if I get up really close to you, this is all you can see. And that's how our problems are. Once they get really close to us, we lose our perspective. It's all we can see and we've got the wrong focus. I get to thinking, we get to thinking things like no Wi-Fi or crabby kids or a sassy spouse or the fact that we haven't been able to find a spouse is a real bona fide, terrible problem. 
But the fact of the matter is we're healthy, we're strong, we can walk, we have transportation, <laughs> we have things like Wi-Fi. We can get the information that we want, we can get on the internet when we want. I mean, there, we've got food. They are standing outside of stores in Cuba waiting in long lines to get food. They said most of the time you can't get meat. If you want eggs, you gotta get your own chicken. We don't have those kind of problems. Not where we live. Wow. I'm getting some perspective back. Matter of fact, I was talking to my friend in Mexico. Uh, she and her husband pastor some churches there, and a couple of the churches are about two and a half hours apart, and they used to drive from one church to the other. But they don't get to do that anymore because there's this political party change going on, and so now things have gotten so dangerous that she can't even drive anymore, and she can't drive her own kids to school. It's kind of like that movie with Denzel Washington and Dakota Fanning. She had to hire an ex-military person to drive her kids to go to a public school so they don't get kidnapped on their way to school. They have to take different routes and go at different times. And the church that's two and a half hours away, her husband flies there every couple of weeks now because they can't drive because the president turned off the gas lines and people wait for days to get gas in their car. She said, you can't make the trip on one tank of gas. So what happens is if you're driving there and you run out of gas on the side of the highway, you could get kidnapped are killed. And here I am upset about the fact that we're hitting bumps in the road and this isn't a smooth shoot right now. Champagne problems. I just wonder how many champagne problems that we have that we've been making into big problems. It's been me. Yeah, it's probably you too, maybe. <laughs> Let me get a shot. Oh yeah. That is funny. I made a promise to show you the proven way to start your day in a better way. Okay, it's biblical and it's backed by science. And I know you're probably already thinking, I know you're gonna tell me prayer. I know you're gonna tell me read my Bible. And these are great things you need to do every day actually in the morning if you can, but I'm talking about even before your feet hit the floor. You ever woke up on the wrong side of the bed? Ever not been able to find the right side of the bed? There have been days when I'm like, I just need to stay in bed because there is no right side. So there's this thing in science called neurogenesis. Neurogenesis is the beginning of thought and believe it or not, the very first thoughts of the day cause this groove, cause this path, cause this route, cause this, this kind of predetermined valley that we will think in for the entire day. So if you got your little notebook out, if you're getting ready to take your notes on Twitter, Instagram, write this down. Before you get out of bed, say out loud 10 things you're thankful for. And if you're like me, you're gonna wake up and be like, oh my gosh, I can't forget to buy milk on the way home. And if I don't get butter, I can't make the thing for the dinner. And there's gonna be these things that are monumentally important in the middle of the night that we have to remember and we're afraid we're gonna forget so we can't sleep. So we sleep too late and we wake up and that's the first thing on our mind is stress, oh my gosh. And then we're like, I can't forget, I'm so stressed out. Neurogenesis takes over and our brain is gonna go to work all day long trying to make us stressed out and freaked out about butter. So get a post-it note out and write on it 10 things. Post it on your alarm clock, post it on your nightstand, post it on your forehead if you have to, and say out of your mouth 10 things that you're thankful for. Matter of fact, Psalm 5 verse 3 says, My voice you shall hear in the morning, O Lord. And I know it's a lot of times it's good morning, Lord, and a lot of times it's good Lord, it's morning. I get it. But God wants to hear our voice in the morning. The rest of that scripture says, in the morning I'll direct it to you and I will look up. God is counting on us in the morning to be thankful for, to be thankful for what? I know you might be struggling with that, so let me give you one more scripture. Psalm 63 verse one says, Oh God, you are my God. Early will I seek you, my soul thirsts for you. Now, we enter his gates with thanksgiving and we enter his courts with praise. How do you get the gates of heaven to open? How do you get God to listen to you? Thankfulness. Before your feet hit the ground, 10 things. 
well, I don't have 10 things to be thankful for. If you knew my life, you would, no, no, no. You're gonna end up staying right where you are for the rest of your life. Paul said in 1 Thessalonians, be thankful in all circumstances. Well, I can't be thankful for my kids. They're making me crazy, but God gave you children. I can't be thankful for my job. Those people just use me. He gave you a paycheck. I can't be thankful for these friends. They're dragging me down. God gave you people to be around you. Until we reframe our thinking biblically and use neurogenesis to reframe our mind with 10 things in the morning. God, I'm thankful you gave me somebody who would put up with me and marry me. I thank you, God, that there is a roof over my head so I'm not outside in the cold. I thank you, God, that you might be thinking, well, I stayed in a shelter last night. Well, thank you, God, that you gave me a shelter to stay in so I didn't have to stay outside. Maybe you stayed outside last night. Thank you, God, that that's my last night on the street and that you're giving me a shelter and a home and a future and a hope. Everybody can be saying, everybody can be thankful for something. 10 things in the morning. Get out your post-it note, write it right now, send yourself a ding reminder on your phone, set it on your alarm clock and do the one way scientifically proven to start your day in a better way. Hello, my name is Travis Green I'm Crank. Jack <laughs> I'm Jackie Green Crank. <laughs> <laughs> I'm thankful for my life. I'm thankful for my family. I'm thankful for my relationship with God. I'm very thankful for my family. Yeah, good health. I don't take that for granted. Absolutely. I feel like gratitude and thankfulness is like the fuel because, you know, I had nothing to do with waking up this morning. It was a gift. It was God granting me another. Raising three boys with a lot of energy and a busy lifestyle, yeah. I think there are moments where I have to just remember that I've been blessed to be able to steward so much. I had a season of being broke. That'll make you grateful. <laughs> I think it has to be part of our breathing in and breathing out. I think the uh, cure for ingratitude is lost. So when I had the least, I became grateful for anything now. Amen. Well, anymore, you find yourself in some pretty interesting situations. I was just hitching a ride with these guys. They are my buddies and they're my transportation. And I tell you what, a lot of times we think in life that we should be moving a lot further. We should be moving a lot faster. We're not happy with our pace. We're not happy how we're going because actually we were going about 50 miles an hour on the highway because we were in this old classic car. We're in Cuba. Yeah, that's where the luggage goes and I'm glad it's not raining. <laughs> and that's as fast as we can go because that's as fast as the car goes. The speed limit 60 and we're going 50, but that was the limit of the car. I was really aggravated about that until this guy was on the side of the road walking. Had all of these horses and carriages, all of these oxen and carts in 2019. You don't even think about that anymore in 2019. I got to thinking, that old 57 Chevy that I was in with no air conditioning, that's a pretty sweet deal right now. What exactly was I complaining about again? Here we are complaining about life, complaining about how fast we're going, complaining about our mode of transportation. And it's time I think we consider how we're riding in life. So I'm wondering how you rolling, how you hanging? Is it as tough as you thought it was gonna be? Or are you moving a little slower than you thought you would? You know, when I got to thinking about the people who were born in Cuba, they didn't make the decision to be born here. They just were. You were just, they were just born where they were born. And to get off of the island at all, it takes $160 to get a visa. You can't get a visa in Cuba. You have to go to Mexico to get a visa to go to the U.S. And to get a visa to go to the U.S., you have to wait in Mexico for a week. So you need the $160 for the visa plus the plane ticket plus a week in Mexico. And you make $20 a month. So what am I complaining about again? Why are we so upset about where we are in life? We couldn't control where we were born, but we can't control our attitude about where we're at. We can control the speed of our blessing. It's hard for God to bless somebody who complains about everything, but when we're thankful for everything, you know, the Bible says to be careful, be full of care for nothing. He wants us to be so thankful that we're not riding on oxen in 2019. I know it sounds crazy, but it's real. I just found out today, this is how these folks live.
one of my favorite things I've ever gotten to do was to go to Cuba and distribute books for free to people. Preach the gospel. You have no idea what it was like to be going into a communist country, preaching the gospel with this really hard to get religious visa and wonder, I wonder if I'm gonna go to jail in a foreign country. The Cuban people, you only make $20 a month as mandated by the government. You're a surgeon, you make $20 a month. You work in a factory, you make $20 a month. So it really moved on our hearts and we knew we have to help these people. With your gift of $20, there's something in it for you. I get to send you a High God book of your own in English, and then you would print three Hola Dios, soy yo otra vez, which is Hi God, it's me again, on Espanol. Yo hablo un poquito de Espanol, but not much. <laughs> but we'll send three books to Cuba and one to you just for $20. With your gift of $100 or more, we will get 20 books into Cuba. We'll distribute them, we will do all the hard work. All we need you to do is help us finance printing them. I know you can do that. And you know what? The people there are gonna be so grateful and so gracious. I just wanna let you know, I'm so thankful that you are helping resource the Nicole Crank Show and, and that you guys are partners with us. And I wanna say thank you. Thank you for helping us help people and thank you for helping us help the people of Cuba. What are you doing, Nicole? I am riding on the back of an oxygen car. <laughs> they say if you're not the lead dog in the pack, your view doesn't change. <laughs> this is quite the view. So if you're tired of the view not changing, the question is, what are you doing about it? Because right now, I'll tell you what I'm doing. I'm sitting here complaining about it, and it's not getting me anywhere. Now, I'm not driving the cart. This guy's driving the cart. But I am complaining about the view that I have. Isn't it funny? A minute ago, I didn't want to walk, and then, before that, I didn't want to ride in the 57 Chevy, but I saw this cart, and now that I'm riding on the cart instead of walking, I'm still complaining about the view. We can find something to complain about no matter where we are in life. No matter how much money we make, no matter how much love we get, no matter <laughs> how much our hair goes on our face, or how good or bad the camera shot is, no matter how many likes we get on social media, no matter whether or not our boss praises us enough according to us, there's always something. So if we're tired of the view not changing, maybe the first thing we can change is our attitude. Contagious thankfulness. What if thankfulness could be like a cold and you could like get it and not be able to shake it? I think it's entirely possible and I wrote a little section in my Hi God, It's Me Again book. It's written to actually read out loud to start conversations with God when the topic's just a little bit tough, and sometimes I'm not thankful. Sometimes I'm aggravated, sometimes I'm frustrated, sometimes I wanna punch people. You ever punch people in your head but you like never actually move your hand? Yeah, I hate when that happens. But it happens to all of us because people drive us a little bit nuts and God wants us to be thankful. And it is the proven way to start your day the best way, so what do we do? Let's go into High God for a second. It says, Hi God, if thankfulness is the hinge that the door of opportunity swings on, I think I figured out why so many doors have been closing lately. I don't mean to be negative and I don't mean to complain. There's a lot good in my life, but somehow my eyes keep shifting to the negative. Does that happen to you? It even happens in the Bible, check this out. The Israelites struggled to enter their promised land. Why? Because they couldn't stop complaining. I don't want that to happen to me. I don't want that to happen to you. I can't be hateful and grateful at the same time. Hello, somebody write that down. Twitter it right now. I can't be hateful and grateful at the same time. I choose grateful. I choose entering the promise as quickly as possible. Your word says I have to put on the garments of praise. And if I can put a smile on for that stranger in the store, oh hi, bless the Lord, have a nice day. I can surely put on some thankfulness for the God of heaven and earth. Hey, I didn't get to finish all of this today. So if you want me to send you for free, the little thankfulness section from the High God book, all you have to do is text me real quick, 314-530-2525. Just text the word thankful and I will send it to you. If you don't have your phone close by, you can go to my website, nicolecrank.com forward slash thankful. Let's get contagiously thankful together.
This is a promo. <laughs> Whatever I'm going through, there's a promise attached to it. Who wore it better? <laughs> <laughs> that was good. It was all bad. Give me all five myself. <laughs> Praying that you have clarity of God's voice in your life. So getting on top of the world, you can't be afraid to take it all the way to the top. How God is in his life. Make sure you tune in. Hey, I'm just spraying a little God repellent because, I mean, golly gee, we wouldn't want him in the middle of everything we're doing, would we? Okay, it might be a little bit corny, but it got your attention. What if we are spraying verbal God repellent all over our life so it keeps him from even paying attention to us? I'm here to prove that it happens. You know, I shared from the High God book a little bit ago, and that's to get you talking to God, but the High God study guide, I use this to help you go introspective to figure out where you're sending your own life on the wrong track. So the contagious thankfulness piece in here, and if you don't have it, that's cool. I'm gonna send it to you for free. All you have to do is text me real quick, 314-530-2525, and I'll send you this little contagious thankfulness piece for free, or go to the website, nicolecrank.com forward slash thankful. That way you have it, so you don't have to buy it. You can get just this little piece. It says, hi God, I always knew that the flu was contagious, but I never considered the fact that being crabby is an attitude virus that can be more miserable than the flu. An attitude virus. Boom! Okay, somebody walks in the office, they come in, and as soon, we're doing it too, and we were in a great mood five minutes ago. What happened? We just got injected with an attitude virus. And the problem is, when we lose our attitude virus, God walks out the door. Nobody wants to repel God. We want to compel God. We want to compel God to move on our behalf. So how do we compel him to move on our behalf? <gasps> Contagious thankfulness. It says, when I let my thoughts run crazy, it's no wonder I start to gripe. Complaining does not compel you, it repels you. How in the world are you going to act God on my behalf if I'm spraying God repellent everywhere with my mouth? So here's what we're gonna do together. It says right here, five things. Five is the number of grace. I admit that I've been complaining about. Okay, so here's the deal. I can encourage you as much as I can. I can like give you word, I can give you proof, I can give you scientific fact, I can pump you up, but unless you do the work, your destiny is just one decision away. What if this one decision helps you figure out what's been going wrong? What are the five things you've been complaining about? You can't write just one because I was taught when I did sales that the very first objection is not the real one at all. Well, of course I'm complaining about the fact that my hip hurts. Okay, honestly, that's probably not the thing that's in the way of you and God's relationship. So let's go a little deeper. Well, I'm upset about my house because I have some repair bills. Okay, let's go a little deeper. Well, the repair bills really bug me because I don't have the money to pay it. Okay, let's go a little deeper. I don't have the money to pay it because I'm stuck in this job. Okay, let's go a little deeper. You know, once we get down to the real objections, now we have our prayer list. Now we have the five top things that we can pray about. God, I need to pray about the repairs of my home. Not complain about it, pray about it. Praise changes things. So first of all, God, I just wanna thank you for giving me a home that needs to be repaired. But God, you've ordained my footsteps. So here's what I'm gonna ask you to do, God. I'm gonna ask you to send the right contractor with an amazing price or somebody at my church who knows how to do this that I can trade with. God, you can make a way where there is no way and I'm trusting you. Do you see how we can turn a problem into a praise? Praise moves God. Complaining repels them. Write down the five things that you've been complaining about, turn it into a prayer list, and watch God stop being repelled and start being compelled to move in your life. So this is Mistel. He's been driving us for days. When we showed up, he had this bracelet on his hand, and that bracelet is a sign of um, worshiping a, like a pagan god. And he sat in the services on Wednesday, and he sat in the services on Thursday. Miss Dell gets saved. He becomes a follower of Jesus Christ. He said, I felt really good. I felt 
real, it was strong. He said, I could feel the power and I could feel and I could understand all the stories. I could understand what she was talking about. I was sitting in the car hearing Miss Stell's story today about him getting saved today and I was telling David, what if God sent us here just for him? This is a promo. <laughs> Whatever I'm going through, there's a promise attached to it. Who wore it better? <laughs> <laughs> that was good. It was all bad. Give me all five myself. <laughs> Praying that you have clarity of God's voice in your life. So getting on top of the world, you can't be afraid to take it all the way to the top. Oh, God is in his literal life. Make sure you tune in. So today we talked about the proven way to start your day the best way. Now you know how to get the day started. Now you know that it's thankfulness that starts it. Now you know how to not repel God and how to compel God to move on your behalf. And now I wanna seal the whole thing in prayer for you. But there's one little thing you can do for me. If you're thankful for the program at all, this is a ton of work. We think about it, we agonize over it, we can create the content over it, we pray over it, we pray over you, we shoot it, we edit it, we put it all together. Just let us know you're thankful. Hit us up real quick on Instagram, Facebook, go to NicoleCrank.com, hit Let's Talk. Share how the program has helped you, share how we can pray for you because we do and we're getting ready to do, and let's become better friends. Let's do more life together. Let's get involved in Insta stories. Let's get on better at Facebook. We get, let's get more involved because you know I talk to you on that thing. So I just want to talk to you more. But right now, let's talk to God. Father God, in the name of Jesus, I pray for my friends. I pray for all of the needs in their life. God, they might seem small to you, but God, they seem big to us. But you're the God who moves the mountains. You're the God who created the mountains. You could move them with water. You can move them with the earthquake. You can make the tectonic plates shift on our behalf. God, you never leave us. You never forsake us. You are the God that never fails. God, right now, forgive us. Forgive us for complaining about the very things that you've blessed us with. God, and with a repentant heart, now you wipe us just as white as snow. And now I declare favor I declare breakthrough, I declare opportunities, and I declare overflow. In the name of Jesus, I pray. Amen and amen. I'm telling you right now, I believe we were divinely connected for this moment. And I think that there were people who were going on a path and it looked okay right now, but once you take that path out, it starts really going the wrong direction. I believe God did a course correction today in your life to get you on the right path to the blessing he has for you. I can't wait to connect with you on Instagram, Facebook, and on the website. And make sure you share the program with somebody. Share it right now, send them a link, send them a story, put it on your Facebook. Thank you for being so thankful. <laughs> I'm getting ready to tell you in three, <laughs> I put up two fingers. <laughs> You're tired of work, ha <laughs> This is a promo. Doot, doot, doot.